Well, you may know I'm a big fan of the warp terminal, and that's mostly because of the UX and UI decisions they've made that just make my life a lot easier as a developer. So it can be everything from like, I can come in here and start typing and I get autocomplete automatically, but I can just keyboard navigate like I normally would on my machine, or I can select things with a mouse. Or each section has a block that you can copy the output. You can actually share this block to somebody else if you'd like to. And then there's a bunch of other cool things, like you have a palette where you can just quickly search for commands or things that you can do. You also have access to things like workflows, which are pre-built things that you can either select yourself, make up yourself, or get from other people so that you can quickly run the same commands again and again. You also have AI command search if you want. So for instance, if I said like, go back to branches or something like that, I can just translate this and ask for, for my permission before it does this. I hit enter, it generates that suggestion, and then I can quickly drop it in. On top of that, I can actually investigate each of these commands and it'll tell me exactly what the thing does. Super helpful, especially if you're copying things over from like Stack Overflow. Now, there's a bunch of new features that have just come out today, and I wanted to do a quick update video on it. I'm going to break these up into five categories, security and reporting, user interface updates, file navigation, session management, and support and learning. All right, let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Now, first of all, I want to mention that this is a sponsored video. Warp asked me to do a video on their recent updates, but they are seeing it the same time you are. And by the way, I will always tell you if I have any kind of sponsorships on the channel, I don't do back-end deals or something like that. So if I'm sponsored, I will let you know up front. Now, let's go ahead and start with the first category, which is security and reporting. Now, if you've been skeptical of the Warp Terminal in the past because of their crash reporting and telemetry, they have listened to the community. And because of that, they've gone above and beyond when it comes to letting you control your privacy and security. So if you open up the settings, I'll do it with command and comma, and you can come over here to privacy. Now here, you can actually opt out of crash app analytics and also crash reports. So you can actually say, hey, don't send these things. Now on top of that, they actually have a network log console. So if you click here, and then you run the command, it will actually show you every single network request that Warp makes. So if I come over here and I select this block or I select this block, you may see eventually that it's going to update. And just so I don't dox myself, I will probably uh, blur a lot of this out. Now this can be verified with something like Little Snitch or something else on your Mac that tracks your network activity. So it's really helpful to me to know that they're actually reporting what's honestly there. So you can opt out of telemetry and now you can actually look at every single network log if you want to to make sure that they're not doing anything you wouldn't want them to do. Next, let's look at user interface updates. This category really is about just bringing the warp experience up to your expectations for working with other terminals. First of all, you can drag tabs and rearrange them. A simple thing, but a really nice little improvement. Next, if I go back to my settings, I can come underneath appearance and there's a new window opacity setting. So I can change this and you can see that now my background is showing here behind this. And then I can also change the window blur. So if I want it to be real crisp, I can do that. Or all the way up, you can see it's getting much more fuzzy there. If I shut this down, you can see. Now that's a little too busy for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. But just so you know, you've got access to that. If you wanna see your windows behind it, your, your code editor behind it, whatever you prefer, you can do that now with these new settings. Now, while we're here, there's another setting under appearance. If I scroll all the way down, you can see blinking cursor. So if you don't like the blinking cursor, you can turn it off now. So if I come over here, now you can see it's just a solid cursor, which is honestly my preference. So that's how I'm going to keep it. Finally, the fourth thing under user interface updates is now if you have long commands, you can soft wrap them. So I'll hit command and R so I can search for a workflow. And here I'll search for a workflow I know is really, really long. You can see here how it's actually wrapping. In the past, you had to scroll horizontally to see this, and now they're soft wrapping. So as I move this, you can see how it actually wraps for me automatically. Next, let's talk about file navigation. First of all, I can CD into any folder by just dragging it. So here are some of the ones I've been working on recently on my channel or haven't gotten around to doing yet. But you can see how I can CD directly to this just by dragging it in there. Again, one of those nice user experience things that you would expect from a terminal. Now, if you're one of those people who likes to drag things directly to your dock, you can do that too. So I'll drag this folder, but you could also do it with a file over to my warp icon on my dock. And you can see it opens a new tab for me in warp CD directly to that folder. The last thing to mention here is that you can now command click to open up files or folders. So here, if I list off all the files inside of this directory, you can see how I can command click. Here on a folder will actually open up the finder for me. If I come back here, I can now open like the style guide by doing the same thing. So command and click, 
except in this case, it should open it up in VS Code. So I'll go ahead and shut that down, but you can see how now you can command click into files. Next, let's talk about session management. Now you can see as I'm switching between different panes here that I've got this indicator that shows which pane is active, but you may want something more aggressive than that. So command and comma will open up my settings once again, and I can come over to appearance, and you see here I've got a new option for dim inactive panes. Now it's a little bit more obvious, this is the active pane, now this is the active pane. Note that that triangle is no longer there, but you can see it's way more clear which pane you're actually working in. Now this works for all kinds of themes, so if I open this up and choose a different theme. Let's, I don't know, go this base pop. You can see the same thing works here. Same thing over here. I'll go back to my base 16 uh, Rebecca. That's the one I like. Another session navigation thing that's really nice is let's say I'm over here and I have a really long command. So I'll do like who is google.com. All right, that should give me the access to everything about their domain. And this is just a real long command, but you can see up top now I've got this sticky navigation header. So if I click here, it'll actually bring me to the original command, but it also allows me to you know, get access to the output, all this kind of stuff from the actual block here in Warp. Now, if you don't like that, again, you can command and comma and go underneath features and you can turn this off if you don't like that, but I don't know why you wouldn't, so I'm gonna leave mine on. Now, another thing to mention when you have lots of blocks open all throughout, because you have all these extra features like bookmarking them or copying their prompt or output, you can actually, you know, build up a lot of memory buildup. And the Warp team has now done a lot of work behind the scenes to reduce the amount of memory this consumes when you have lots of session blocks. Warp has also improved the experience when it comes to working with Git. The first thing is that it will actually visually track your changes with a new Git prompt. So let's say I came in here and I went ahead and updated my readme. So let's just say I added the word update to my readme. You can see now I get a visual indicator that I've changed one file. Also, just a note that you can actually copy the Git branch if you want to. So if I come over here, you can see how I can copy the Git branch or you can also do that from the command palette. So git branch, just like that. So you can copy it. In this case, it would just be main and I can paste it back in there. Now you can actually change those settings if you want to. So if I come back over here to keyboard shortcuts, I could come over here and search for like git uh, branch and it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut by default, but I can add one. So for instance, I could do like option and comma or something like that. Now just note that you have to click save or it won't remember it. So I'll click save and now I can come over here and let me first of all, copy something else. All right, there you go. So now I can actually use it and show you how it works. So I've hit my keyboard shortcut. Now I can paste it and you see it's actually copied it according to the settings I set up. Now, if you wanna ever get rid of a keyboard shortcut, you can do the same thing. So I'll come over here to Git, uh, copy Git branch, and I can just reset it to the default. In this case, that would be removing it altogether. All right, last thing I wanna mention is support and learning. Now there's a couple things here. First of all, if I come over here, there's a new little warp sidebar. All right, so you've got Basics like the change log, which is helpful just to see anything that's updated recently. If you're getting started, understanding kind of the basics of Warp, maximizing it, so kind of going beyond the basics, and then more advanced setup, which mostly just points to documentation. On top of that, you get access in here to your settings and also a sidebar for your keyboard shortcuts, which you can actually toggle with command and a forward slash, so just like this. And once again, you can come in here and search for anything. Note that this will only search for things that actually have a keyboard shortcut. So like workflows or something like that, it'll show you what that is. So all of this is available in the new sidebar. Finally, the last thing I wanted to mention is let's say I was in here and I was running some kind of dev command and I had an active process going on, but I went to quit warp. Well, now you actually get this little warning that says, hey, are you sure you wanna quit? You have one process running. In this case, I'm done with the video, so let's quit. Hey, well, thank you so much for watching. I trust this was a help to you in understanding the newer features in Warp since November, and especially a lot of the new ones that just dropped today. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.